Congratulations, Economic Class of 2020, and congratulations to the parents, partners, siblings, and friends who helped you make it to today. Thank you for joining us to honor our students and be part of this special celebration. The past couple of months have brought new challenges unlike many of us have ever known. I applaud each of you, our amazing Sea Wolves in your Stony Brook Red, our courageous and dedicated students who did not lose sight of the finish line, eager to complete this phase of your education and achieve your dreams, our next wave of leaders. Today, toss your virtual caps in the air because you've earned it, you made it, and it will be an experience you will never forget. Cheers to each of you and congratulations and go celebrate. Hello, my name is Maria Simonti, and I'm the chair of the Department of Economics of Stony Brook University. Let me start by stressing how excited and honored I feel about sharing this moment with you and your loved ones. It's graduation day, congratulations. I know it hasn't been easy. Some of you had to leave home to come to Stony Brook. Others had to endure the craziness that it is to come in Long Island. Many of you had to leave your own countries, learn a new language, adapt to a new culture, or perhaps you had to work your way through college and attend classes and work at the same time. But despite all those unique challenges that you faced, you made it. You should feel extremely proud of your accomplishments. You made it through the math, you made it through the econometrics, you made it through the game theory. You even had to solve your own prisoner's dilemma. You, more than anyone, are equipped to face the challenges that are coming ahead. Perhaps at the time, it seemed that some of the lessons that we thought were too abstract, but let's think for a moment how they help us understand the situation in society today. When you read Exponential Growth, you knew the pandemic was serious business because you have worked with dysfunctions in your maximization problem. You also know that any decision has costs and benefits, that nothing comes for free, and that we need to face trade-offs, and that individuals choose whatever is best given the constraints. Like, for example, this moment, the faculty of Stony Brook University would have loved to meet your parents to congratulate you in person, but we did what is best given the constraints, and we did the ceremony to honor you. Now, I would like you to take a moment to thank your parents because they have been with you along the way. If you're lucky to have them next to you, give them a hug. If not, just think that your parents are thinking of you and are very proud about this moment. As faculty, we would also like to thank the parents because you have entrusted us the education of your kids. It has been delightful to work with them, to teach them, to see them understanding new concepts. Economics is a very challenging degree, but we hope that the tools that we gave you allow you to be in a unique position to face and navigate the difficult times that are coming ahead. You have learned the tools that you need to succeed to think for yourself and to make a difference. Congratulations. Have a great day. Dear graduating economic majors, it is the time of the year when we typically all get together, you, uh, the faculty and staff of the economics department, your families and your friends, to celebrate your graduation. And it makes me very sad that this year we won't be able to all get together and shake hands and perhaps exchange some hugs. My hope is that such an in-person ceremony can take place in December and we can get the chance to bring you up on the stage and make you the stars of the celebration as you should be. Still, I want to send you this message on the day of your graduation. Just like previous cohorts of graduates, you spend about seven semesters experiencing what it means to be a college student, going to lectures, going to recitations, completing projects, completing assignments, taking exams, working hard to fulfill your SBC requirements, but also learning a lot about economics and making new friends along the way. Along those years, you have probably faced some difficulties or even suffered some setbacks, but you persisted and you managed to get to your last semester before graduation. Your last semester has been very different than any previous cohort. Um, even though it started with the usual combination of uh, stress and excited anticipation for your upcoming graduation, it was completely changed right in the middle. 
you had to abruptly move out of your class or out of your residences. Um, you had to endure online lectures and office hours and recitations, online exams. And you had to do all this without being able to meet and discuss in person with your faculty or with your classmates. Most tragically, you've had to do this in the midst of a public health crisis that has affected everyone around you, including yourself, and has generated seemingly insurmountable problems, uh, both financially and emotionally for everybody involved. So although I tell my graduating class every year uh, that I feel very proud of them for reaching this milestone of their lives, I think you specifically should feel extra proud for getting here despite all those unprecedented obstacles. Uh, please accept my warmest and most sincere congratulations of the day. After seven weeks of online videos, I'm sure you will agree with me that uh, these online videos make a poor substitute for the kind of stimulating interaction that one gets uh, in in-person face-to-face interactions. So in full awareness of this, I want to give you two brief, but I think important points. The first one relates to acknowledging your support group. As you reach this milestone in your life and you feel that warm glow of success, uh, I think it's important to look around you, identify your support group who has been there helping you all along the way and explicitly acknowledging to them that they have been important. Um, your support group can be your best friends, your boyfriends or girlfriends, it can be your spouses maybe or your children um, or other members of your family, but my guess is that for most of you, the most important people would be your parents. They have been there with you all along the way. They have provided wise advice. They have provided encouragement and comfort. They have supported you both emotionally and very often financially. I know that they feel immensely proud at this point for you. Uh, and I think they deserve their contribution to be acknowledged. So I urge you, if you haven't done that already, to turn around and give that acknowledgement right now. I would go even further and suggest that you want to think about acknowledging your support group in the rest of your life as you're feeling successes. I'm, I know many of you and I'm confident that you will get to this stage several times in your life where you feel a sense of accomplishment and that provides a very good opportunity for you every time to look around to the people that help you get there. Um, the second point I wanna make relates to our recent shared experience with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, I certainly don't want to minimize all the difficulties that you are facing or all the worries that you might have about uh, graduating in an economic environment that seems set to be one of the toughest we've seen in decades. But I do think it's important to take positives out of every experience, even the worst ones. So as economists, you probably know very well that in the last three or four decades, due to technological advancements and innovations, the economy has been experiencing a lot of fast paced changes. Uh, everybody, has needed to adapt fast, uh, acquire new skills, uh, retrain sometimes, or even rethink whole careers. And that fast paced, ever changing environment has meant that a lot of people, especially in my generation, have been left behind. Uh, you have just experienced one of these events that require fast adaptation on a massive scale. Uh, and I think that experience is going to be very helpful for you in the future. I think it's important to understand that you will learn and improve out of it. And I think it's even more important to understand that you've actually done very well through it. You come here to this point, you're graduating today. So that's a good indication that you're ready to face this fast paced environment in front of you. I was aware that your generation is much better at adapting fast than my generation, 
but in recent weeks you have really showcased this ability of yours. Um, so that makes me particularly optimistic about you and your prospects in the future. I believe you're going to thrive in your future careers. Uh, I wish you every success in your future careers and in your future lives. And lastly, please remember to keep in touch with us. Every year, the Department of Economics asks one of our graduates to address their peers. And this year, we've asked Giselle Marnilla. Giselle was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and grew up in Westchester, New York. She joined Stony Brook in the fall semester of 2016 as part of the University Scholars Program, and is today graduating with a double major in economics and applied mathematics and statistics. While at Stony Brook, Giselle has excelled academically, being on the Dean's list for six consecutive semesters. Uh, but Giselle stands out especially due to her research endeavors. Uh, she was awarded Eureka funding. This is the University Research and Creative Activities uh, for the summer of 2019 for her work on the intergenerational mobility within New York State. She became Eureka's featured researcher of the month in September of 2019 and has continued since then working on the topic of intergenerational mobility, uh, extending her work to the whole of the United States. Uh, Giselle has uh, contributed to the vibrant life of the university, not only by working at the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, but also by mentoring freshmen as part of the University Scholars program, program and being a writer and editor of Stony Brook Press. I want to thank Giselle, especially for being able to record and share with us her address in the middle of final exams week. And I want to congratulate her for recently securing a position as an analyst at Harry Joe LLC, a city law firm that specializes in prime brokerage, OTC derivatives, and securities finance. Congratulations, Giselle. To the economics class of 2020, although we are scattered all around the globe, tuning in from our homes, we are gathered in spirit to celebrate a major milestone in our lives. We've done quite a lot to get to this point, but we couldn't have gotten here on our own. We owe our thanks to countless people for helping us navigate through the past several years. So thank you to all of the professors and the teaching faculty for your instruction, your guidance, and your mentorship. From that initial Eco 108 to the upper division courses, from the massive lecture halls in Javits to your individual offices on the sixth floor of SBS, you've been with us the whole ride. You've been open to our questions and patient with us as we tackle new subject matter and ways of thinking. Most of all, you inspire us with your own passion for research, for teaching, and for mentoring. You've invested in us and have encouraged us even when we doubted our own potential to succeed. And for these, we are forever thankful. And thank you to all the graduate students, the grad TAs and the undergrad TAs and tutors for also helping us in our academic journeys. We appreciate your time, your sincere eagerness to help us and your ability to teach and break down complex ideas. Thank you to all of the academic advisors, the staff of the department and of the university for keeping us on our toes about job fairs, internships, events, and academic plans. And thank you to all of the staff on campus, the security personnel, the custodians, the food service workers, all of you working in the libraries, in the stores, in the fitness centers, in the dorms. Thank you for keeping our environment safe and clean, our stomachs full, our computers working. And thank you to all of the RAs and the CAs for helping us adjust to living on campus or commuting. We appreciate your time, your energy, and your care. And lastly, thank you to all of the parents and the families and the friends back home and at school. Parents, you've helped us pack our suitcases, you've driven us to the airports, and you've checked in on us, calling us when we forget to call you. You've welcomed us break after break with warm hugs and a home-cooked meal. So thank you, parents. And to the, to the friends, all of the old ones and the new, thank you for all of the study sessions, the shared meals, the late night conversations, and the beautiful memories. 
through years of working and growing. And with the support from all of these people, I really do believe we have the tools and networks to face the challenges ahead. There's no way to sugarcoat the current situation. Our class has inherited a health and financial crisis of unprecedented historic scale. Many of us have been hit by the pandemic one way or another, either financially, physically, socially, or emotionally. And some of us have even lost loved ones to COVID-19. To those of you who have, I extend my deepest condolences. Some of us are suffering in silence through quarantine. Some of us are trying to juggle a million responsibilities and anxieties. And many of us have lost job or internship opportunities that felt set in stone just a few months ago. All of us are forced to readjust and replan for the years ahead. But there is no greater time to believe in our college degree than now. We've learned a great deal the past four years about a million things, from how to solve for Beta Hat 1 to taking the right bus from the SAC, from giving an elevator pitch to navigating personal relationships, but possibly the most important thing that we have gained and developed over the past four years is the idea of persistence, especially persistence through adversity. The path to get to here, to graduation, it wasn't easy. We persisted through dense material and exams and projects. We had to persist through late night studying, through our majors and our minors, through setbacks in our plans, through career changes. We had to persist through new jobs and internships, through steep learning curves and plateaus in our own growth. And we had to persist through Long Island traffic, through the LIRR, through missed trains and last minute schedule changes. And we had to persist through emotional burnout, through rough patches in our relationships and through fallouts and moments of doubt in ourselves. And yeah, the last four years, it was a lot, but no one said getting a college degree would be a walk in the park. And we knew what we were getting into. And we won some, yes, but we fell a lot. Maybe a lot more than we want to admit, but for every fall, we got up. Through it all, we persisted. And we are going to persist through this. Recovery on a global scale might be slow. For some of us, it may feel like we are throwing our resumes, our cover letters, our voices and names into a void. For others, we may feel like we're working against the current day in, day out just to survive. But we are a resilient crew. Yes, we are the class to graduate into a global pandemic, but we refuse to be defined by the circumstances. Rather, we choose to be defined by our reaction to the circumstances. And going forward, we will be characterized by our ability to muster the tenacity and the endurance needed to make it through this. And one day, when the world has long recovered and recalls this significant chapter of history, I believe they will remember our class for our perseverance, our courage, and our hope, because we are resourceful, we are resilient, and we are not alone. We are the graduating class of 2020. Congratulations to you all. Today, there are more than 300 students graduating from Stony Brook University with a major in economics. And as the undergraduate program director, I am very proud of all of you, as well as a little bit sad to see you go. I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight the achievements of a small subset of our graduates who have distinguished themselves. And I want to start with nationally recognized honor societies. The oldest and most prestigious honor society in the United States is Phi Beta Kappa. An invitation to Phi Beta Kappa uh, recognizes and honors exceptional academic achievement in the arts and sciences. And members of Phi Beta Kappa graduating from economics this year are Olga Aristova, Javin Arian, Jin Yi Liu, Xian Yan Xie, Bowen Yang, Yi Dan Zhang, and Yu Chen Zhang. I want to send a special Shout out to Yi Dan Zhang, who I've learned recently has joined Cornell University to continue her studies as a PhD in operations research. Congratulations, Yi Dan. The corresponding honor society 
within economics for economic students is Omicron Delta Epsilon, otherwise known as ODE. Uh, so I want to recognize Adam Kula, who has been recently inducted in this honor society. Uh, Adam has been instrumental in the operations of the economics club, a point to which I will return somewhere at the end. Moving to within university, there are two programs within the university that recognize academic excellence, the Honors College and the University Scholars Program. Uh, the Honors College is a highly selective institution uh, which accepts students with a broad vision, high motivation and superb skills and that emphasizes especially research and presentation skills. Members of the Honors College graduating today are Olga Aristova again, Benjamin Chase, Samantha Davison, James Edel, Lillian Ehrlich, and Daniel O'Mara. Uh, Samantha is the only one out of the six that actually graduated back in December, and she is currently working at the New York Fed. Hi, Samantha. Uh, moving to the University Scholars, the University Scholars program houses students who maintain academic excellence and integrity, uh, who actively participate in the life of the university through programming and events, but also who help improve the educational environment for all other students. Uh, members of the university scholars graduating with a uh, degree in economics today are Derek Canales, Alex Kushner, Giselle Maronilla, Pasan Pathiranaj, Noa Tong Chie, Jessica Tang, and Emma Todd. Within the department, um, this year we were able to offer honorary economic scholarships. At the beginning of the year, we ran a competitive selection process, uh, which required students to apply uh, with their GPAs, their personal statements, support letters from faculty, and also required a short list of students to come in and interview with members of the department. Uh, there were a lot of excellent students. It was really hard to choose who to award this award to. Uh, it was especially hard to distinguish between the top two candidates, who were Olga Aristova and Lillian Ehrlich, and therefore we decided to split that award between the two. Uh, both Olga and Lillian are heading to the city to work at Citigroup as analysts, one of them in the sales and trading division and the other as a quantitative analyst. Congratulations to you both. The department also awards honors that are specific to the economics major. Uh, the honors are awarded to students on, their ba on the basis of their excellent GPAs, uh, their participation in 400 level classes, but most importantly, for conducting excellent undergraduate level research in economics. This year, we have four students that have been awarded honors in economics, and those are Olga Aristova, Benjamin Chase, Samantha Davison, and Lillian Ehrlich. Now you might have noticed that Lillian's name have, has crept up in many of those awards. Um, so it was not a surprise to me when I learned a couple of days ago that she has been awarded the Provost Award for Academic Excellence. Uh, Lillian has done an amazing job. Uh, the Provost Award uh, is awarded every year to a select group of students who not only excel academically but also do good research and contribute to the vibrant life of the university so i'm very proud that lillian is one of the awardees uh, by the provost finally i want to say a couple of words about three students that i've already mentioned who spent a year um, running the economics club. The economics club is a club within the university that is entirely run by students. And Olga, Lillian, and Adam 
have done a truly remarkable job in running this club. Um, they've shown initiative, they've been creative, um, they've shown a willingness to participate and engage in the department's life, and also to provide an environment that is stimulating for their fellow majors in which to learn and discuss about economics. Uh, every week they organized meetings where there were discussions and presentations uh, on topical themes in economics. They invited prominent economic figures to discuss in panel session within the club. And also for the first time, as far as I can remember, in the economics department at Stony Brook, uh, they prepared and participated in the New York Fed Challenge. This is the New York Federal Reserve running a challenge throughout the New York states where students uh, go to the bank and present their recommendations for monetary policy to members of the Monetary Policy Committee. Um, so I want to send out a special shout out to all three of you, Olga, Lilian, Lilian and Adam. Um, I want to thank you for making this year a particularly exciting year for all of us. And I wish you the best wherever you go. Hi, this is Professor Benita Silva. I just want to talk a little bit about independent research. Um, as a research university, one of our main um, jobs is to, to do research. And, uh, and the other research um, it's accomplished through independent research in which you choose an advisor and you work on a topic. Um, I do want to say that this is an important part of the curriculum for the students that choose to do it and dozens of you do it every year. Um, I myself uh, um, interacted this semester with Giselle Maronilla that you have heard today and her excellent work uh, using a very challenging data set, the PSID, and writing on um, on social mobility uh, at the family level. Um, I've also worked with Kyle Soglizo, uh, working on, on the price differences between online and, and, and traditional retail, and with Jaja Cody Devon, the relationship between housing prices and school quality in New York City. Um, this is just, they are just examples of the excellent research that our undergraduates, you guys, uh, do, and we are very proud of your accomplishments in research. Thank you. Hello, class of 2020. Um, you know, it's, um, as a student, you always remember when the year you graduated as, as faculty, we, we usually confuse one year with another. Um, this is certainly not going to be the case for 2020. 2020 is gonna be a very special year uh, for everybody, for all students, for families, for, for faculty. And um, one important thing uh, we're gonna remember uh, from 2020 is that you students um, work hard, adapted, and managed to achieve your goals uh, in the midst of very adverse circumstances. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to be something that is going to be um, um, a characteristic of the 2020 class, that they're going to be the ones who succeed uh, against uh, adverse shocks, because there's always going to be some adverse shocks in, in life. So all the best for you and congratulations to all of you. It's double deserved this year. So all the best and good luck. Hi everyone. I just wanted to take a few seconds to congratulate you all. You are officially economists. So you can start pondering with the rest of us, why did we study economics? But seriously be proud. You put a lot of effort to get here and you deserve to be recognized. And don't forget about your family and friends. Whenever you can, celebrate your achievement with them. I am sure that they are as happy and as proud as you are. My kudos to them too. I want to apologize for a few things. 
for my weekly quizzes and my exams with no makeups, for pestering you about shifts in supply and demand, and for asking you to compute strategies in tic-tac-toe or the power of the president in the US federal system. And also for my newest one, wait for it, narrowing down the topic of your paper. I hope all this is watered under the bridge now and we can concentrate on being colleagues and friends. Last but not least, I want to thank you for letting me be part of your journey at Stony Brook. Congratulations, class of 2020. I've been really lucky to, get to teach a lot of you. You were exactly what's best about public universities and Stony Brook in particular. So, you know, like the architecture is pretty utilitarian, the coffee on campus sucks, but there's this like world-class economics department and a world-class science and, and the academics, that's really what makes it special. But even more than that, what, what matters here is that you're hungry and that's pretty unique in the world. And why I'm so optimistic and enthusiastic about your chances is that I've seen that you guys, you're really hungry. So you've got this set of tools and you're just gonna go out and throw it at whatever you can and, and conquer worlds and stuff like that. You know, so I've gotten to interact with you guys a little bit closer in a couple instances. For instance, I, I supervised Samantha Davison, right? This beautiful thesis about the way that workers' earnings change when they change industries. But just more than that, I, I wrote on so many letters of recommendation how good you are compared to anybody else that anybody could get. And, and wherever you land, they're going to be really lucky to have you. Congratulations, class of 2020. I wish the best of luck to all of you on all of your future endeavors. Congratulations, everyone. I'm, I'm very happy for you at the at this important landmark and of course I'm sorry we couldn't be there to to celebrate in person. I was um, very lucky to have many of you take my international sequence this year and I think we did really good work with that and I we, we covered some some important and timely material and in particular I wanted to mention I was really really happy to see that many of you showed a lot of professionalism when after spring break we had to to switch to online and you guys showed up and you did great work in the second half of the semester. So I thought that was very encouraging and sort of very positive sign about your uh, professional development. And of course, I want to very briefly mention um, the people who undertook independent research under my supervision. I was very happy to work with, uh, with Jessica and Lillian this uh, this year and I, I think I've learned quite a bit about policy announcement and FDI flows and the other stuff that uh, their work covered. I thought that was that was uh, very exciting for me to, to be involved with. So um, that's it of course, congratulations again. You, you, you guys um, did great and now you, some of you are headed to grad school, some of you are headed into work and I'm very excited about your potential. I think you're gonna do great. And so I just wanted to wish you guys the best of luck and hopefully uh, we might run into each other again in the future. So so congratulations and, uh, and uh, see you guys later. Hi guys, my name is Eva Carceles and you will remember me because I'm one of the teachers of principles of economics, one of the first courses that you take in economics. I remember some of you saying that the principles we learned were kind of dry, but I hope you will now appreciate that they are very useful tools to go out into the real world. Remember that one of the first things we learned was that we face trade-offs. And notice that in the midst of COVID, politicians and governments are facing one of the most difficult trade-offs they have faced ever in their lives. Do they open the economies to reduce the economic cost of the lockdown? but at the expense of more human lives? But let's not talk more economics. This is your big day. What I want to say is that I think you're fully equipped now with a very useful set of tools that will help you to succeed into the real world. I'm extremely proud of you, and you should be too, because you have graduated in the midst of an unprecedented situation. So I really congratulate you. I congratulate all your families and friends and whoever has gone through this journey with you. 
I'm extremely proud of you, and I hope to hear from your future and sure successes. So please keep in touch with us and tell us all the great things you do out there. Congratulations again. Good morning. Let me say a few words about some of our undergraduates I've come to know over the last couple of years. Um, let me begin with uh, the ones I go back with furthest. Adam Kula, Olga Aristova. These are two students who've been um, leaders in the undergraduate economics community. They're mature, engaged with the world of economics and beyond, and have really brought a lot um, to our program. Uh, Nicole Chan, likewise, is in that group. Um, I'd like to uh, single out Ramonjad Ball, who was uh, a TA for me in mathematical statistics. She um, joyfully, unreservedly uh, gave of herself to other students in the class, uh, showing astonishing generosity of spirit. Um, James A. Dell has spent this year uh, immersed in mathematics as he prepares to enter our PhD program in economics next fall. So to James, farewell to you as an undergraduate and welcome uh, to the PhD program. Uh, let me also mention, and I think of them as a pair, uh, Lynn Jean-Louis and Melissa Sosa, who I knew uh, last year. They were practically sisters. Um, both of them have been in extraordinarily engaged in their communities, and I think they are uh, on their way uh, to success. Uh, Ang Lee, this semester, as a student who proved to be as comfortable in writing thoughtful essays as in solving mathematical models or leading tours of prospective students on, on campus. Um, Emma Todd has somehow managed to stretch her talents over both music and economics, uh, a remarkable thing to have done. Um, and let me mention as a group, several students um, who have surmounted the turmoil of this past semester and managed to uh, organize themselves and leave Stony Brook on a high note. Uh, Jessica Tang, Kyle Honor, Colby Fiedler, and Joseph Pecoraro. And so to you, uh, I say thank you uh, for enriching our lives and the lives of the university community. Hi, this is Professor Benita Silva. Uh, some of you, actually many of you, know me from teaching ECHO 303, Intermediate Micro, and also Applied Micro, ECHO 323. Um, this is a really special day. It's graduation. It's by far my favorite day of the year. It's a time in which we get together and we, we see each other and it's all smiles. And especially with the family, your friends, that are so proud of you in such an important day. You accomplish a lot. You finish your studies. After eight semesters and a few maybe summer courses, you're done. You're an economist, an economics major, sometimes a double major with AMS, with business and other majors. This is a really important time of your life. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to look back for a little bit and say, hey, I've come a long way. Four years, sometimes a little bit more. Uh, many of you from foreign countries, like many of us, the faculty, and you've accomplished a lot. Thanks to your families, your friends, your supportive uh, team, um, you're here. And, and this is a special year because, you know, nothing has been easy, especially in the last few months. The wall around us sometimes seems that it has been crumbling. Um, all of a sudden, we had to leave our offices. We had to leave the campus and we had to go home and, and restart from there in order to finish the semester. Life finishing is always the most difficult part. And these last six weeks, seven, eight weeks for all of us have been challenging, especially for you. But now you're done and it's a time to celebrate. We are very proud of you. And I'm very proud of seeing so many names that I recognize when looking at how many of you are graduating. Um, I don't want to sort of go on and on with the names of the people that are graduating that I know, but of course, some of you guys are in the class that, that I've been teaching this semester, like Giselle Maronela, 
Kyle Soglizzo, Jaja Cody Dibon, Andong Chi, Srinivasan Kumar, um, Ariel Salazar from previous years, Shang Bo, James Glossman, Benjamin Chase, Catarina Ramos, Liming Zong, Wadi Tang, um, Pedro Palacios, um, and, and many, many more. Um, I, I'm so happy for, for, for all of you. Um, and I think I especially want to say that we are here for you now and in the future. These are special times and you can keep relying on us into the future. Again, congratulations, congratulations to you, to your families, and please enjoy this time. It's a time that you will remember forever and you will remember that you made it and you made it through one of the toughest times in our, in our, in our history. Thank you. Hello everyone, congratulations on your well-deserved success. It has been my pleasure helping you along in your journey to graduation. I am happy to share in the excitement of this day and I'm so very proud of you too. The economics faculty and staff would now like to applaud you on a job well done. Woo! Woo! Congratulations! Woo!